So this is colorblind. Four point three K Pen, please. Four point three K flex. Will colorblind join you at some point? Uh if she wants to. I'm not sure if she's around right now. There's a point there. It's it's right it's right there. There's a four point three K flex. Huh. Yes. Uh da, da, da. okay. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. I believe. Can, can anybody invite him? Hello? Oh, uh, what's sorry, 50 divided by five? Okay. Um, yes. Uh, colorblind came out as trans, so she prefers she now. Um, I don't really care what your opinion is on that. It doesn't take literally any effort to use she instead of he, so um, <laughs> play nice. Play nice. I'm, I'm pretend I never asked that. I I personally don't get it. You know, I I in the same way that I can't relate to the trouble women have solo queuing in competitive. I can't relate to somebody who comes out as trans, but trans comes out as trans. Oh, comes out as trans, but uh, it takes legitimately no effort on my part to call them by the pronoun they want to be called by. So I'm gonna do that. I identify as a trance. <laughs> Fuck him, me. I'm dumb. Yes, 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 yes. Before you get to be cute, lol. No. Fuck. <laughs> I'm turning red. So that is the worst slip up I've uh, made in a while. <laughs> so embarrassed right now. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I should. Faria, why is Faria here? I'm turning red as a tomato. I'm sure of it. I don't it. know if I do. Why did I say is that? Is this a potential time to run triple? For what? Triple support. Triple. I can go Bridges. Good. For Bridges, I thought we were just gonna do Farrah McCree. Fuck. I'm so sorry, color. <laughs> oh boy. This is a sweet scrim. This guy's got, uh, <laughs> oh. Colorblind, Angela, Evie, Evil Toaster, Faria, and Rami. That, this is going to be a fun scrim to watch. This is going to be a fun one to watch. Uh, is she actually colorblind? Yes, she actually is. Probably Evie Toaster, Ryan Zarya. Or, okay, yeah. So they're playing on Li Zhang Tower, I, starting on Garden. Play, I'm actually surprised Colorblind isn't playing Bastion here, because Colorblind does like Bastion, especially on Li Zhang. Every time I've played Colorblind on uh, Li Zhang, she plays Bastion. Uh, you this this was a tournament for Inidio Gaming. Oh, was it? Interesting. What do you want? And then we also need map. Lucio, so we could put like. I know it might be surprising, but yes, someone who has named then, uh, themselves colorblind wait, is wait, actually wait, colorblind. Wait, wait, wait. colorblind. Mercy put Eva, EVA on, uh, oh, Evil Toaster is strategizing. Let's listening. Let's listen to this. Three on Diva. And then. Uh, wait, wait, Angel, wait, 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 wait. No, put Angela on Mercy. Put Eva, EVA on uh, Brie. Oh wait, no, 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 wrong way, wrong way. Yeah, we I have it right. Lucio. Okay. But a free a color needs to go diva. Oh, you could. Me on diva though. Me on diva is a monk ass. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at diva too. I can try it. Ooh, colorblind's okay. playing diva. I like this. This is all what it comes down to. They're probably this? gonna go right side. I'm gonna speed in all the way to left, and I will tell let's you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So they're playing dive with pharmacy. A little music going on in the background here. Watch for the thing. Yeah. Once no, uh, I once can get no there's end. I can get there's end. I can't. Sorry. So I Rami. We traded, we traded, we traded. So Rami tried to go for the little like bridge boop here and got punished for it. This is where kind of being a Reddit Lucio and being a team based Lucio is really, really rather challenging. Um, 
in an individual, like in a Reddit Lucio situation or something like that, getting these boobs can be really impactful. But if you don't get this boob off successfully or you feed because you tried for it, then your team is essentially fighting a 5v6. So the only other kind of thing that you could use the Lucio for in this situation is kind of like AoE healing your tanks and providing a little bit more aggression while being also a little bit more resilient um, to focus fire. Like you can amp speed, you can boop away. You're also pretty good at staying alive, but dying here is not very good. There's a lot. There was a period of time where teams were running um, Moira and Mercy with their pharmacy, so the Mercy stuck really hard to the Phara, and the Moira just pocketed tanks, and the Moira also had a little bit more survivability. But uh, yeah, when Reddit Lucios go wrong, this can make it very difficult for teams to win. Never mind. Winston over here, Winston I'm over on here. Monkey, I'm on monkey, I'm on monkey. Nope. Got Zen? You're even, you're even. Winston, no jump, I'm Winston, right. no jump. I really like the decision from Color there to leave Mini Diva. A lot of people get hung up with the uh, the absolute need to kill Mini Diva, but if we're talking about like Mini Diva versus Big Diva, um, Mini Diva can hop around, and if your aim isn't like G Master's GM level, um, the Mini Diva can break your mech in return and then have the advantage in getting back into mech herself. So just breaking Mini Diva and recognizing that Mini Diva is basically out of the fight here, and we have a Fara. And Mini Diva's worst nightmare is projectiles, especially like Farah, who don't even have to hit that stupid fucking hitbox and just hit near him, and she's dead. One direct from a damage boost to Farah will kill Mini Diva. She's got other people on the team that can better deal with the Mini Diva than her. Immediately after breaking the mech, fucks off somewhere else. I we're like dead, that. We're dead. Can't kill there, Mercy. I hope this we song doesn't. Live, it's unfortunate with the Taylor Swift in the background, we probably can't upload this to YouTube. Single tier. Yep. F in chat I've for the YouTube viewers. Yep, I fucked up. That's okay. That's a, just one. So Angela is on to uh, Brigida, and then I assume Rami is still on Lucio. So they're gonna play some very weird version of triple support pharmacy dive with Brigida, Mercy, and Lucio. With like the reason that you would run so many supports in the dive composition is basically completely allowing EV to stick to uh, Faria in the sky, like hard Farah pocket. Um, because one of the things when you are playing in pharmacy is that you want your Mercy to be damage boosting your Farah for as much as possible. Because when you're operating with a Farah, good Mercies can also basically get both benefits, the, the yellow beam and the blue beam. So people think that playing Mercy with Farah is really easy. You hold left click, occasionally every couple of seconds you hit shift, and then you're Gucci, the Farah carries you to victory. But it's not that easy if you want to be maximally effective. Because remember that is set, uh, with a Hanzo ult, which is being changed, but the damage boost for your Farah only matters at the time of impact of the rocket. So if your Farah is taking damage while shooting, and if you can keep an eye on the rockets from your Farah and just very rapidly switch to damage boost right as the rocket impacts and then swap back to heals, you can get all of the value of just holding right click and giving them damage boost while getting the vast majority of the heal boost. So if a Mercy who can accurately just right click just for the time that the rocket impacts can still heal a Farah who's in close combat, being focused while still having her rockets do a lot of damage. So playing Mercy with a Farah is actually probably one of the hardest tasks of a Mercy to do successfully. It's, as with most things on Mercy, it's incredibly easy to be adequate. It is incredibly difficult to be, you know, better than that. It's, it's so easy to just hold left click and just hold shift. If you actually want to min-max it on Mercy, it takes a lot of skill and practice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, well, Evie yeah, doesn't want this VOD reviewed. I'm sorry, Evie. Right right, where do we go? I don't usually um, like using micro-missiles before a tracer has recalled. 
Now, Colorblind obviously isn't a D.Va player, um, but one of the things that you can do is try and hold your cooldowns for as long as possible. Um, you don't really need your defense matrix after recall, because if the tracer has recalled, it's unlikely that they're going to stay aggressed. So you can use most of your defense matrix um, to fuck with the tracer before the recall, and then after the recall, if she blinks away, your boost on D.Va is worth just around two blinks out of a tracer. So if the tracer is in on your back line, you can be an asshole. You can just left click on her, not boosting at her. Um, and then like defense matrix the shots if there's onto a Zen who's critical or something. But after she recalls, then you boost after her with micros and she gets fucked real hard, especially if she overused resources and you didn't use yours. Matrix the, uh, All right, the three, boot. two, one, speeding. And this is also what I'm talking about with Lucio being ineffective. Winston has his jump here. Diva has boost here. Farah can fly. And Mercy gets to basically Guardian Angel to whoever the hell she wants. So what is the real value of amping speed here? There is none. There's almost no value to amping speed here. Almost none. What you can do is that if both Winstons have jumped onto one another, for example, if a Winston jumped in and then their Winston counter-dived and your Winston was losing, what you could do, for example, is speed your Winston, who no longer has his cooldowns, out of the fight. Or if somebody is trying to get away, you can speed after them. Like if they have a Zenyatta, like if your um, if your Diva messed up, for example, if your D.Va messed up, your Winston came in and jumped and landed on the Zenyatta, and then your D.Va comes in and boops the Zenyatta, but accidentally boops the Zenyatta out of the range of the Winston, the Lucio's speed can help the Winston catch up to the Zenyatta. So if you are going to be playing Lucio in this sort of dive composition, you want to be using the speed, and especially amped speed, for times where the cooldowns are not up and you still need to reposition. So in dive where characters have their own mobility, you don't want to overlap mobility, essentially. Um, yeah. And the other thing is that if you don't have to use amp speed, you're gonna have to use amp heals, especially since your tanks are gonna be taking a shit ton of damage from the Phara. Send at the tower, send at the tower. I need Matrix. No Matrix. Then boot me off. Let's just try another pop. Zen, Zen, Zen left, Zen left, Zen left, Zen killable, Zen killable. Zen down, Zen down, next target, next I'm target. I'm bubbling on tower. Oh my. I'm probably gonna die here. Diva, Diva, Me and Rainier are gonna I like Eevee. Stays the most focused, stays on the fight. Freya wants to switch up the composition, which is probably the right call, but I think it's a bit early. It was mid-fight. Should the call have been made to reset? Probably. But, uh, so Eevee stayed focused on the fight. Give me off Diva. And if, uh, you know, if... If Faria did want to switch the composition or thought that the fight was lost, a better call would have been kind of like fight loss, you know, reset or something like that, and then make the swaps. Because if you do continue to fight a losing fight, not only are you giving them ult charge, but you're also giving them control percentage. The only time that you fight a losing fight to the death is when you have control of the point. Oh. Okay. Let you me McCree, yeah. Um, I play McCree. So McCree's good, but it'll mean that you I'm probably, I'm like, player. you're also got a Brigida, and especially from having played Brigida the last couple days, <laughs> Brigida gets absolutely shit on by Farah. So I would like to see your Brigida swap off to something as well, but the McCree swap is good. It's just, you're going to have a, lo a lot of difficulty crossing the bridge, as well as if you get Dove in your tanks. So you were originally playing Dive, but with the McCree, especially the McCree Brigida, you're going to want to swap to counter dive. And what counter dive means is basically diving second. Is when that when their tanks use their mobility, you decide whether or not you need to counter dive onto the tanks who presumably dove onto your backline, or if your backline can handle it, you make the decision to dive onto their backline. So counter dive basically means dive second. There's anti dive, which counter which counters dive. But then there's counter dive, which means dive second. Uh, I'll stay on this one. I'm just gonna make big space. Should Angela go then and Rami go? I will do that, Eevee. So. Are you ready to go left? We'll try yeah. one more time. That's probably the play. I'm, going in. I'm gonna primal. So Toaster jumps in to try and make some space. Because he has primal. Who's the target? Who's the target? Very good decision there. 
He was behind us, no booster. Yeah, monkey, low, monkey low, monkey low, monkey low. So you're actually making colorblind in this video is actually making the same mistake that the Zinyadavod uh, that we looked earlier today on King's Row in the fact that uh, he is. Um, so the Zenyatta was kind of like focusing the tracer when it was not super necessary. Now here, normally you would think that McCree, McCree's job is to focus the tracer, but we have a Brigida and the tracer themselves is being ineffective. They're not killing anything. The chance of them actually killing anything outside of pulse bomb is really low. So what the Zenyatta player was doing in the in King's Robot was trying to go for these like little duels that didn't have forced have to happen instead of doing and getting more value. So instead of missing all these shots, these shots could have put on to been put onto Diva, could have been um, forcing the Pharah because the Pharah is still alive. The Pharah just killed Faria, um, but. You know, if you land a shot and Faria lands a shot at the same time, then instead of Faria having to land two or you having to land four, then, uh, you know, you can take the Farah out. So the Tracer here is not doing anything. The chance of them, her killing anything, you can just make the call, you can tell the Brigitte to do it, but trusting your team to handle the task that they are meant to handle. Like, did you swap onto Brigitte to deal with the Tracer? No. You swapped onto the, or onto the uh, McCree because of the uh, the Farah, not because of the Tracer. You already had a Brigida. So it's not like you, because if you go onto the Tracer to deal with her, it's not like the Brigida can be like, okay, McCree, I see you've got that Tracer for me. Thanks, bud. I'll deal with the Farah. And the the, the Brigida is just like swinging her mace skywards. But uh, yeah, notice color. Is color here? Hi, color. Sure, call me. Okay, yeah. Um... Evie, did you want to join us as well? Or Faria? Did all of you want to join? We can all talk about this if you'd like. <laughs> the whole squad is The here. whole squad! If either of you are interested in joining us, you're more than welcome to. Hey. Hey, Evie, how you What's doing? What's up, Evie? And Free is just joining as well. So this was a tournament, was it? The chat was telling me that this was a tournament, VOD. Yeah. Yep. So what was the... Tell me a bit about this tournament and why you guys entered and, and how it went, I suppose. It was like a it was like a streamer tournament thing. Uh, I just got invited by Rami to join Faria's team. I didn't know much about it, but we there was something like five teams. Uh, most of them were like Diamond Master rank, and so those were pretty pretty big stomps. But the team we were fighting here was like apparently they're like a contenders team or something. Oh really? But they've like played together a lot, and they're like all Grand Masters, so it was like a pain in the ass. So did you guys have uh, I guess Faria? Hi Faria, say hi to chat. Hello. How it are you doing? Doing good. What about you guys? Uh, well, I'm, I'm having a good stream. But uh, how much time did you guys actually kind of... Did you do much prep for this? Or was this more like a, a fun tournament where you just kind of got six people and entered the tournament and uh, just went for it? There was no preparation here. No preparation. We just, uh, we just immediately hopped in, pretty yeah. much. You do yeah, have, I was you... kind of in everyone's chats trying to get them in. We played some <laughs> low gravity to practice. Was, you, oh, practicing <laughs> in low gravity. It's like the hyperbolic <laughs> chamber, but in reverse. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, and was there any, like, I guess in terms of the roles, uh, Angela and Evie obviously have overlapping roles, and then you have Rami, who's known for her... Uh, a Lucio, were you concerned about uh, you know making a team with the proper roles, or was this just very much on the for fun end of the spectrum tournament? Well, it turns out that Rami's really fucking good at Diva, and then <laughs> Evie's really good at Lu or, uh, uh, Zarya, and so like it, it ended up not being a problem. They would just kind of swap. I mean, like it was weird when we like we we had Rami on Diva, but we needed a Zarya, and Rami wasn't like super comfortable on Zarya, so we had to swap like Evie and Rami over, which um, messed with alt charge a little bit, but that didn't really happen very often. So like, I, I, I thought that uh, the, um, I thought it was gonna be, uh, <clears throat> I should probably let someone else talk. I'm still waiting. Oh no, up, it's, but... yeah, feel free. It was, it wasn't as, I thought three supports was gonna be weird, but they, we did really, or they did really well. Did um, you guys end up winning the tournament? No, we came in second place. Second place. Oh, this was the uh, this was the last match. Oh, and was this the finals one. themselves, or? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, these are the finals. Oh, nice. We took I had another to one on Volskaya, which went really bad too. But uh... so we actually won against uh, four other teams. This was the finals. This was a best three out of five. Mm -hmm. uh, the maps were already two two, 
and it basically gets down to last couple percentages on on who would win. So this is the fifth map in the finals. So whoever wins yes. is wow. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't even realize that. That was nice. Chat picked the right VOD to look at, I guess. Um, now, Evie, you made a, I think I saw on Twitter, you were also, you made some comment about having practiced aim-based heroes recently. Was that, am I crazy you remember things or have you, are you branching out? No, yeah, out? I have. You have. So yeah, tell, me, um, tell me about this. Uh, I, for 18 months, pretty much, I was 1600 DPI and 23 sensitivity because I exclusively played Mercy. However, um, while that was very beneficial for me playing Mercy exclusively, it was detrimental as a player. And so after a little bit of thinking and tr attempting to flex onto a couple other roles, um, I went down to 6.8 and still 1600 DPI. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after a while, what brought my mercy sensitivity back down to that as well. Uh, but then two weeks ago, I went down to uh, 3.04, 1600 DPI, which is the highest sensitivity I can have without uh, pixel skipping on 1440p. Oh, you um, use 1440. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, thankfully with my setup, I can lock 300 FPS at 1440 native. Um, That's but... a nice setup. <laughs> That is a very nice setup. So you've been you've been trying to bring your sensitivity down uh, to make it mm -hmm. easier for more like precise aiming. Which characters are you playing the most that uh, do have that kind of mechanical component to them? Uh, I would say at the mo uh, right now the most time I'm sinking into uh, that require aim that I'm also simultaneously comfortable with is Zari and Ana. Nice. Um, putting a lot of time into them. Um, but I think something that you might find interesting that I've noticed is after two weeks of the sensitivity. I just had this like moment of realization. This sensitivity even now feels too fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, you're, it's an addiction, right? It's an, as soon as right, you start yeah. lowering your sensitivity, you're like, "How low can I go? <laughs> Look at how accurate I am. I can't even turn ninety degrees, but I can place it on whatever pixel I want." <laughs> I did that when I was experimenting. This was the first FPS that I'd ever uh, kind of uh, played. And so I started pretty high, as most new uh, players to FPS do, and then dropped. I think I went down all the way to 2200 at one point. And then uh, I've slowly worked my way back up to 4800 EDPI, which is where I'm feeling a little bit more confident. But, uh, you know, I, we're at the point where personally I'm playing with the trade off of being accurate as also, um, you know, being able to do 180s very crisply and quickly. And if mm -hmm. I am tracking a target through 180 degrees, lifting my mouse off the pad really throws off tracking-based heroes. So the only re kind of reason I would ever go lower is maybe one day when I do kind of set up different sensitivities for heroes on characters like, um, you know, Widowmaker, who don't need uh, to turn 180s as quickly, maybe I would play with different sensitivities for different heroes. Toaster wants to join as well? Sure, we'll get him in here. But yeah, Faria... How is it uh, playing? I know sometimes you get frustrated with ranked, but how is it playing in the tournament compared to, you know, ranked? It's a different experience for people it who kind of. It was actually really, really nice to have a team that worked together so well. Oh, did Toaster get in here? It's actually been okay for me as of late. What? We hit number oh, one fire. Yeah, are you still? Because you touched GM for the first time how long ago now? Because that was a huge moment for you. Like two months ago. Two months uh, ago. Was it already two months? Hello? Hi. Hi, Toaster. How are you doing? Hey, Toaster. I'm okay. <laughs> Only okay? Only okay? Are you I'm also good. kind of not looking forward to this VOD? Do you think you made a lot of mistakes on Li Zhang as well? Everyone else seems okay. to be like, oh, oh please, not this map. Please, not this map. Hold on. Uh, Rami, Rami wants to join, too. Sure. As long as she's on Let's your friends list, you can invite her to the call. Would you get the entire team in here? Perfect. Yeah, just the entire team <laughs> hey, that works. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Okay, so now that, right. now that the whole crew is here, let's go through one at a time and everybody introduce themselves as well as kind of like talk about who you are, why people should care about you, and where they can find you on social media. So yes, it's my stream, but feel right. free to plug your stuff as well. So Colorblind, we'll start, uh, start you off. Um, oh. And... <laughs> So tell us I was here who first. you are, why people should care about you, and where they can follow you on socials if they so choose. Twitch.tv slash colorblind. That's not who you um, are. 
<laughs> um, no, that's. I gotta get that out of the way. I'm a. Uh, I'm colorblind. I was here before. I'm a. Uh, I'm a Bastion main who plays um, Bastion and other hit scan heroes. Um, I just got out of bed, and I'm uh, a Bastion main. Um, this. Uh, let's see. I got a YouTube too. Uh, colorblind. How long have you played Overwatch? Were you playing since beta? Oh yeah, I've played Overwatch uh, since the uh, since the um, what was it called when the beta happened? Mm-hmm. Since the Bastion beta. had a shield. No, no, no. I didn't play that beta. I you didn't play beta. the version of Bastion that had a personal one thousand HP shield? Oh, you missed it. <laughs> I don't think it was 1,000, was it? It, it was, was 1,000. Holy shit. Bastion, no, Bastion had a personal shield that had 1,000 HP Yeah, on no it. thank you. No thank you. Um, <laughs> I started playing during the, uh, when he had hit scan, um, well, I mean, when he had a hurt, uh, what's, it, what's it called? When it had headshots, and his, mm-hmm. tur- his turret spread was, like, super tight, um, and I was around with it for the rework and everything, but um, before that, I played TF2 for, I had, like, 1,000 hours on the heavy, and so, like, when I moved to Overwatch, I, was, I asked my brother, like, which hero is the most, like, TF2? I mean, heavy. And he, he was like, well, you can either play D.Va or Bastion. And I was like, well, I could either play a little girl or a big fucking badass robot. And I was like, well, <laughs> I think I'm going to go for the robot. But then when I started playing, uh, they all got mad at me for playing Bastion on offense instead I needed to learn a new hero. So they made me play Mercy and follow my brother around on Pharaoh all the time. And I got pissed. And then I started playing Bastion more. Fair enough. <laughs> Did you ever play on, uh, what's the highest team you've played on? Or have you stuck to solo queue? I have solo queued for the whole time. Um, I would duo queue with people every now and then. Um, I, I was on a UGC team a long time ago. But we UGC? Like comp, we would, well, for uh, what is that for people who don't know? Oh, it's um, so it's something I learned back in TF2, but it's United Gaming Clan or something like that. It, they just, they, it's tournaments and shit. I mean, I mean stuff. They, uh, <laughs> they, you make teams and you play against other teams in like custom games and stuff. It's a lot of fun. Um, I was on a little itty bitty uh, UGC team. Um, that was back before the rework, and uh, <clears throat> um, it was uh, something. I played with them for a few months, and then I decided to, uh, we all just fell apart. Um, and then a couple of years, about a year later, I tried to join another team, uh, but they were really bad, and I was like, ah, no. And so I left, and since then, I've just been solo queuing. This uh, tournament thing with, uh, with the um, LGBT, LGB Toaster was the uh, best. Is that, that your the, team like, name, LGB uh-huh. Toaster? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was the um the the uh, the first tournament experience I've had in a long time, and it was really cool. So now I want to join another team, um, and do that again because that was fun. It was like, uh, it was like it just felt like what Overwatch was supposed to be. I don't know. And LGBT stands like... for Let's Get Back Together. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Poster was our token street dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that's fantastic. That's so cool. Okay, so that was colorblind. Faria, same thing to you. Who are you? Just about you. Talk. Go. Oh, Tell okay. us things. So, uh, hi, friends. My name is Faria. I am a fire one tri- fire main. Um, yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm a fire main. Currently number one fire in the world. Pretty proud of that. And, um, yeah, twitch.tv for you is where you can find me. I'm the same as Colorblind. I started off in TF2, but I mean the spy, so not very aim-heavy, <sighs> just, like, backstabby. So I started in silver I started in silver in about season four when I picked up the game. And, uh, yeah. You're not going to... You're, you're, wow, okay. So Faria is apparently not going to share, but she also has made uh, <laughs> some... You wouldn't call them parodies. What are they? They're... Just Overwatch versions of songs? And twitch.tv Fariha, F-A-R-E-E-H-A, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Rami, your turn. Tell us about yourself. Tell us stories. I am a boosted Lucio man, is the word I'll use. Uh, Or the phrase I'll use, rather. Um, I've been playing Overwatch, not since beta, but since launch, um, I actually got bullied into playing the game. Uh, <laughs> okay. I used to... How did you get bullied? You can't say that and not tell us the story behind it. How did you I get was bullied going into the game? Okay, so when Overwatch was coming out, I was about to go semi-pro in CS uh, with a couple of my friends. I was, I believe, like, just, I was like, LEM. It was just before Supreme. 
And we were about to start a team, but my friends were like, no, Overwatch is coming out. You can either start this team by yourself or you can come play the game with us. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Well, I don't want to be alone, so I'm going to go play this game with you guys. And uh, lo and behold, I just kept playing and kept playing, and here I am, GM, top 500 around there, playing Lucio. Been 4,600 several times. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Rami. I have a Discord as well, discord.gg slash Rami. Um, that's about it, really. I have a, like a very, very small YouTube that has done nothing yet, but soon, maybe. Okay, so Faria can sing, and Colorblind's talent is drinking way too much Starbucks. What's your hidden talent? What My that's hidden not... talent? <laughs> uh, so little known fact is I actually used to be a DJ. Oh. So a lot of people think that I'm actually the IRL Lucio, and eh, I don't know. So do you have a song you can link us then? you got any originals? No, I don't have anything on YouTube anymore. Uh, I do intend on doing a DJ live stream at some point soon, but not not quite yet. I need to get some tapes going. Ooh, that's interesting. Sorry, mm -hmm. colorblind, I had to poke fun. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> I would have killed for Starbucks right now. Huh? Honestly, Sam. Oh, Evie. Most people know. He, I think you're the most famous in the group right now. But uh, for uh, those who don't YouTube know, who you are, my YouTube has the most subs. My YouTube has the most. Oh, Evie's throwing down. Okay, yeah, so, so for those who aren't subbed to your YouTube or know who you are, same thing. Introduction. Tell us. Tell us who you are. A story. Introduce yourself. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll start off as well as like many of the others that of how we got into Overwatch. Um. Originally, one of my friends, uh, we, we played a lot of, uh, at the time, Call of Duty Zombies, and we just played that every day, pretty much. And uh, one of them uh, was like, yo, Overwatch just came out. I'm like, I, what? What is that? And he, he was like, yeah, just get it and play with me. I'm like, but I don't I don't want to spend $60. And the thing that convinced me was like, oh, it's $40. i am like, all right, fine. So, and since I, in many other games, I like to play class, like, a lot of people don't know this, but in Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2 days uh, for Call of Duty, I played that for thousands of hours. Um, for like PS3, I was the first in the world on PS3 to be the max level. Um, and, you know, I was, the, I, was the, I was a Slayer type of player. So I would, you know, go 100 plus kills in a less than 10 deaths, etc. Uh, sometimes 200. Uh, if it was a Sunday, <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, it, and then when you compare it to what I play now, people are like, "How how can you get to this point? <laughs> how can you be playing Mercy of all of all things?" And like personally, I like the influence that Mercy has. And originally, it was just that Mercy is the only hero in the game that can res, and I felt that was really powerful. Um, and so I liked having that influence on the match. Um, but was interesting that was like kind of kicking in, in the background that I didn't realize because, you know, I was brand new to like Mercy and, and I had literally only played Mercy for 800 hours of Overwatch. But around 12 hours of playing Overwatch, I realized, wait, other heroes in the game don't have auto heal? <laughs> Mercy's the only one. Mercy's the only one who heals herself. I have to trust other people otherwise. What is this bullshit? Yeah, so then, so then when you think about it, like COD's the game that, you know, has auto passive regen and then you compare it to like Mercy and it was just like, wait, it just felt natural. So and then once I got like once I started to be better at her mobility, which is the thing that even to this day is the, this is the one thing of Mercy I'm still hooked on. Mercy's mobility is very satisfying once you keep uh, utilizing it properly. And so it kind of just flowed from there. Fair enough. You know, Bastion has like kind of auto self heal if you think about it. I'm thinking about it. It ain't auto. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm not sure you know what auto means, but it's close, I guess. I don't think it's... I ever let go of right click when playing, honestly. <sighs> and you don't, yeah, you don't, because like... you used to also get more health when they removed, because uh, you used to get more health when you transformed into tank farm, right? They moved that. Yeah, you got 150 bonus armor, but they took it away in place of being able to heal while moving and being able to have damage resistance. So it's actually way better now. Fair enough. Yeah. No, so many that people think it's not. Better. It is better. <laughs> okay. okay, color. Okay, okay, color. Okay, last last one. The token straight man, Toaster. Uh, hello. <laughs> Hi, Toaster. How you doing? I'm good. So, 
You want to let people know who you are and how you got dragged um, into this shit show? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> we needed a straight man. Well, I am. Uh, I'm Toaster. I'm a longtime Overwatch tank player. I technically played before release. I was like in one closed day alpha or beta, whatever it was called. And pretty much been playing ever since, except for half of season 10, because, you know, I have a soul and I like to keep it. So, uh, yeah, I started with a lot of Reinhardt, a lot of Winston. Then Arista came out and I was like, you know, this hero is really cool, but no one wants to play her because she's really bad. And I wanted to, like, do my own thing because I've always been the kind of person that played the bad heroes or bad characters in games. Like, that I at least saw some kind of potential in it. Why? Why do you kind of, like, play those heroes? Is it just you're drawn to them? You think that you can do things that other people can't with them? I like to advance the game, basically. Like, let's take, for example, like, back I used to play Marvel vs. Capcom. And I played that competitively. I traveled to tournaments, yada, yada. I was, like, one of the only Doctor Strange players in the whole world. And everyone said that he was really bad. But I saw potential in him. And for... like two three years i just played him by myself until people realized he was actually good because i would make tech i'd make videos for him i'd show off all this stuff because and then like sure enough people go to evo and some guy plays my team and gets top eight and like using like my team and that's kind of like what i like to do in games because i don't like to just play what people already know so I you... like to find the new things. And when Narissa came out, it was the same thing for me. I was like, no one's even trying to explore this hero. And I knew just from like the numbers that this character is probably better than Reinhardt. And sure enough, a year later, most people will say Arissa is better than Reinhardt, but meta is still a thing. So Reinhardt is still played more often, but in the 1v1 matchup. So are so, you kind of yeah. like the video game hipster then? I mean, I guess so. That's <laughs> not a that bad you could way have to made put it, it. Do you think you could have made it farther in Marvel vs. Capcom if you had put all those hours into a meta hero? And, um, I mean, maybe. Like, I never learned a Magneto. And uh, my Doom, Doctor Doom was like, whatever, but okay. But I liked Zero. I liked Strange. Okay. And I just made it work. Interesting. And that's just kind of what people do in fighting games. They just play what they want to play. I, and that's kind of what I like to do in any game. So, of course, coming to Overwatch, I just like to play what I want to play, like any, you know, honest one trick. <laughs> but because it's a team game with other players, they kind of, like, get antsy whenever you're trying to do your own thing. Do you... So, it was kind of funny. We had a, a VOD review with uh, ML7 earlier this week, and his opinion was that uh, as a one trick, he doesn't uh, have the right to basically tell anyone else to what to play or whatnot. Do you guys share that uh, opinion? Evil, I guess, first? I mean, yeah. Like, I am totally fine with trying to make any team comp in a game work. It's... That's really just it. But the other thing is, is that I know that, like, my hero is, like, totally acceptable. Like, a lot of people, especially right now, after, like, the Season 9 and 10 craze of, like, there are only three tank duos. You only play Ryan Zarya, or you only play Arissa Hog, or you only play Winston Diva. Arissa Diva. Now that that meta has passed, people are still stuck in that mindset. So if I play Arissa, no one wants to play Zarya, no one wants to play Diva, even if it's totally the correct choice. They're like, I must play Hog, but Hog is not really meta. Nope. And Arissa Diva is really strong. But, yeah, Arissa uh... Diva is really good, and Arissa Zarya is also okay. But I understand why Zarya players don't like it, but usually any Zarya player that will communicate still gets energy. They're yeah. just, it just, it's just a matter of like how lazy are you. Okay, well let's get into the VOD. I know some people in the chat are starting to get antsy because we're not actually looking at Overwatch footage. But uh, So we're right at the 83% mark, and I'm not sure if we're going to win this fight or not, so I'm just going to let it play. And uh, when I see a, uh, when I see a question or something, I'll pose it to one of you and we'll just go from there. 200. Can they not flash her? Last fight, guys. We can win this. We can win this. This is totally doable. Rami, uh, Angela, and Toaster all pick up one. one. Looks like you are going to retake this. I have beat. So, Toaster and Eevee, you two are probably the most experienced with like high level shot calling and whatnot. We're. It sounds like Toaster is doing more kind of like the. Uh, in the fight calls themselves and then Evie is doing 
you know, more macro level stuff. Is that kind of a good assumption? Did you try and divide the roles at all in terms of like who was saying what or keeping track of what? Basically, the, the way that we kind of had it figured out, at least by the end of the tournament, was that I would make the macro calling and EB did all the micro calling. Okay. So I would say, like, this is how we're going to approach or this is the ground we're going to take. These are the ults we're going to try and use or not use. And then during the fight, EB would pretty much just call, like, everything, like, who needed to get healed, who needed to move where. And, so it's uh, kind of the other way around from what I thought it was. But it was, yeah. was you two. Did that kind of... Did that kind of calling work for you, Evie? I, I would say absolutely. It's pretty natural for me because my call, my shot calling isn't really shot calling. It's more of an observation calling. It, it, not everybody has eyes everywhere. And as Mercy, you're the furthest back, typically. And so you can see the most of the field depending on the map. And that's why some maps I'm like super quiet and I don't actually call much. But in some maps, I like call constantly. And it's maps I have a higher win rate at, actually. Um, and when you're playing with a Farah, especially one like Faria and whatnot, what are you focused on when you're attached to Faria? You know, are you focusing on what Faria is shooting? Are you scouting for Faria's next target? Are you keeping a, you know, one eye open for Toaster's health to see if you have to kind of leave Faria to heal up tanks? When you're playing with a pharmacy compared to playing otherwise, what are your main focuses? Personally, I've, I, far playing with a Farah is the only hero where I look at the health bar in the middle of my screen. Otherwise, I just have a general idea of when they've taken damage. But looking at the health bar in the middle of my screen while playing Mercy while pocketing a Farah allows me to look around and never actually having to physically look at my Farah. Um, I look back up just to GA back up, but that's it because I use a uh, non-preferred beam target. Um, but so that allows me to constantly focus on what enemies are near what teammates and what teammates we can allocate quickly to kill what enemy um or what threats are potentially going to be coming to my fara to potentially give uh them a heads up etc um and so that's the unfortunate reality of my shot calling is like i, I feel like i've actually diminished over time of some of my, the qualities of my shot calling i.e old tracking i don't do old tracking almost, almost at all anymore i just do not focus on it Fair i enough. focus a lot more on the individual moment to moment stuff and that that is a bad thing it's not fair enough at all um, in my opinion. And so it, that's why I like a lot of people say my shot calling is really good, but it's really not at all. It is really just observation, calling out what information I believe is the most useful to my team. As far as what I play, I'm always going between my far and my, uh, and my players down below, because if my far is not getting shot at, um, which Faria and I would say, um, Freya and Valkia both have a solo queue playstyle of Farah, where mm -hmm. they don't assume that they're getting healed, <laughs> or when they or when they don't get healed, um, or when they do get healed, uh, they just assume that they're getting pocketed for a while. And sometimes I use that to where when I know that they're not going to receive any more damage from, like, say their McCree died, I don't need to pocket my Farah almost at all anymore, but she'll still be aggressive because she thinks she's getting pocketed. And so that allows me to focus on the teammates that are actually dealing the most damage uh, on the ground, such as if Brigitte is swinging on three people, that's doing more damage and benefit to the team than pocketing our Farah that's shooting a, a rocket on a tank, very likely so. So it balancing who you're actually helping on your team as Mercy is usually always your top priority in way of the way I've, I, I, I would, this would be my free what to think about tip as Mercy. If you don't have your beam on somebody for more than a second, i.e. including when you die, you're doing it wrong. You need to always be thinking about who you need to have your beam on at every single moment of the, of the match. Okay. Uh, Rami, during this match, uh, like especially when you're playing dive and you know your mercy's in the air, you don't have like a Zenyatta to protect her or something. I've seen you going for a lot of like really aggressive boot plays. You got punished for it once. You pulled it off successfully the second time here. Do you like? Do you have tournament experience first, like playing on a team, and uh, you know if so, do you change your play style between solo queue and a match like this in a tournament? Uh, well, to answer the first question, yes, I do have a little bit of tournament experience. Uh, I played on two teams. I actually used to play for the Goats. Um, oh, really? There's, yeah, a uh, little bit of roughness there, but um. Otherwise, that uh, other than that, I've been. I used to play on Silver Sanction Esports. Uh, we played a couple AG weeklies. Never really did much. Um, 
then after that, as far as do I change my playstyle, uh, yes, yes I do. Uh, in solo queue, I'm normally, because normally when I play Overwatch, I'm streaming. I, I'm more focused on communicating, I mean, yeah, I'm focused on communicating in game, but I'm more focused on engaging my chat than, you know, communicating everything I see. In a tournament setting, I play a little more passively, I still play aggressive at times, but as you can see, I, I still try to, you know, get some kills if I can help it. But I'm normally just calming what I see, staying back, healing the team, etc. Occasionally I'll go off and, and get a kill if I can help it, but uh, usually it doesn't work in a tournament setting like this, so I try not to. What kind of, um, you know, it was you beat four other teams and this was the finals. What kind of, you know, play style did you find worked best with this specific team? Were you more kind of helping out Toaster? Or were you trying to... You know, what were you trying to do, and what other characters other than Lucio did you play during this tournament? Um, well, as far as what did I try to do, I was trying to... Evie was trying to keep... I wasn't remembering... I don't remember who she was trying to keep alive, but she was trying to keep alive numerous people. I was trying to keep alive the people that she couldn't get, essentially. So I was just looking at where she was putting her BMAT, and I was like, okay, I need to go for the other people. Because she can't... Obviously, obviously, she can't do anything, so I was just trying to pick up the, the slack, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as other supports that I played, I remember playing a little bit of Zen. I remember that not working. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. I suck not at Zen. A, not everyone's a Zen player. I, I wish I could, because he's so much fun. But, um, I played Brigitte with, uh, mild success. I think I tried Ana for about 10 seconds and was like, yeah, this is not going to work. Um, now, and... most, um, most Lucio players do kind of... They're normally callers, so they normally communicate quite a bit, especially with like engagements, you know, engage, disengage, alt tracking. That's usually a lot of the stuff that goes on to Lucio. Is that something that you normally do? And if so, how did you find, um, you know, your comm style changing with having Toaster and EV on the team? So with EV and Toaster on the team, they were doing a lot of the the shot calling. I believe Evie was keeping track of like where everybody was. I was more focused on keeping our ults in or no, rather, I was more focused on keeping the enemy ults in line, trying to keep them in my head at least. If I knew something was going to happen, I would call it, but I wasn't calling like, you know, okay, they've got three ults or etc. You know, it's not something I'm particularly good at, and okay. it's always been a flaw of mine. But I tried to work on it a little bit at this game in the set of games. Is that something that, you know, through your solo queue, you're going to... Oh, that's... Is that actually D1BZ? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the real one. Okay. Um, but in your actual... In your actual kind of like solo queue, is this something you're actively working to improve on, your ult tracking? Yeah. Um, and the main reason why I want to work on it so bad is because throughout my team experience, I've always had trouble with that. Um, the easiest ones to keep track of are tank ults, but like DPS ults, Terrible at it. Support wow. ults, okay. Most people but, actually struggle with the tank ults, especially like Winston and D.Va's tank ults above any others. D.Va's really challenging to keep track of. Uh, Winston, yeah, I could see how that could be challenging, but like Ryan Zarya, that's Yeah, the, really the Ryan Zarya ones are usually pretty easy. Also, hi, Blinky. Good to see you. Um, anyway, so enough of like the individual interviews. I'm going to try and watch this and provide some feedback on this actual Control Center game. Um and then if I kind of, if I see a mistake or something that I have a question on, I will ask. So why the Bastion swap here, Color? Oh, I, do I still have Color muted? <laughs> color. I was waiting for somebody to notice that. <laughs> Hi, color. Sorry, there was an echo in your uh, no, your voice earlier. I had muted you. That's fine. I, I I had open mic on. I turned it to push the talk. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, um, why the Bastion swap here? Uh, I like I'm better at Bastion than Junkrat, and I looked at their comp and was like, oh, they're mo they're slow moving and shit. I guess I can play Bastion here. I don't know. I think I wanted to roll out on Bastion anyway, but decided to just roll on Junkrat because I figured they were gonna like have an anti-Bastion comp anyway. But then when I saw that it wasn't super anti-Bastion, I just decided. Uh, to try that instead, because Control Center is a good map for it. Fair enough. Um, did you, I wasn't kind of paying attention to the comms here, but did you kind of communicate this with your team, or did you just, like, make the swap? Um, I can't remember. 
I think I just swapped. Yeah, you see the swap. Just go, just go. So how does this change how you play around control center? Um, because I know Colorblind has the style where she doesn't always like playing with the tank, likes to kind of set up in new locations or whatnot. Um, how are you looking to play around uh, Color's Bastion here, Toaster? Reaper left, Reaper left. So, so me? Yeah. Well, you're the tank. Okay, we how are you going to play yeah, around like, Color's like, swap to Bastion? Or maybe well, else. I don't know. on uh, this map, it's pretty I close range, so it's easy to get flanked. And uh, they are running Reaper. So it's kind of hard to just like find the easiest spot ever to just sit and camp forever. So we really just kind of have to play like we are inching in, or like like right now, colors just shooting from this range, and then we move in. You uh, undeploy and walk up forward a bit and just yeah. take it like inch by inch. So Bastion because, sets up. Uh, in a you never way. know when someone's gonna come behind or come from the side and like this. And I don't know what happened to me there. Did I just like get charged like an ape or something? I don't know if I didn't trade charge or died. We don't have enough heals. Fair. Have yeah, so have heals. like one of the main ideas, especially with like attacking with Bastion, you set up, you take control of all of the sight lines that Bastion has access to. The tanks take that space and hold that space while the tank, or sorry, the Bastion himself is moving forward and setting back up. And they, yeah. the opponents played this pretty well. They hit out of LOS and then caught you in transition to your new location. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not no, like a... It's not that different from other DPS. It's more, just more, slower, no, no, no. but the reward is greater is because, you know, it's you're Bastion and you do a billion damage. Should I go creep for the hey Snow, I good like... to see you. Oh, no. uh, I oh, go go man of Snow. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just... Do you do you remember like a year and a half ago, Man of Snow kind of made his own team? Do you remember that? Anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. I yes. <laughs> just is that is that a nod? Say yes. That that's a yes and no other comment. Oh, okay. It's gonna be one of those yeses. Okay, toaster. Um. I actually applied. I remember. For, I actually no. Please forget. I applied for that team, Man of Snow. I just wanted to let you know that you never even sent me a rejection letter. <laughs> no, it's fine. <Oof>. But <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. That was one of like the first projects that I really enjoyed. I loved the idea of kind of like a player kind of wanting to form their own team and whatnot. So. I think that that uh, I mean, that is... tweet from Manisto was kind of like the first thing that saw me or that was one of the early early things because right overwatch was one of my first fps it's man mm -hmm. of snow's tweet about building a team i was like oh that sounds fun and that was one of the first things that made me actually start looking at overwatch teams so let's go let's go she doesn't have us the same we can, we can get a dive on her watch for playing i'm shattering that got lucio got lucio it's big oh well. i can res reaper behind reaper no reaper's reaper. one reaper's one he's dead he's dead he's dead Trying to heal, trying to heal, trying to heal. I need to be healing the door. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Let's go, let's go. Go hard, go hard. Go hard. I have Valkyrie. Should I pop it's it? just three on point. It's no. just three. We win this. Okay. We win this. We just Maybe. need to do this. Then win. Now. Listen up. We win this. I'm charging Ryan. Ryan is one. Ryan is very low. He's getting healed. I should have held on to that. I'm so sorry. You guys should be Are you healing our bomb. Oh, big, big. Huge slam from Toaster. Sorry, Reaper just laid himself out in front of you. So, Evie, we didn't really see this fight from the perspective of uh, color, but do you remember that fight very well? Uh, who, me? Evie. Oh. Uh, the fight where Toaster got the shatter or the previous fight? This fight here. So just the one where Toaster uh, hit the shatter because color died very early on when he got caught in transition. So the fight was happening, and I heard you and Faria calling. Do you remember this fight or what happened? Or Faria, I guess. If you said, I'm sorry for using that, I, I figure, I assume you used a barrage and didn't get value out of it. Faria, do you remember this fight? I do not, TBH. Can we, can we re rewind that a little bit? Sure. Let's just listen to the comms while Color is dead. Actually, what day was this? This was the finals. So color just got died in transition here. So Reapers won. Freya's on the outside of like one HP no, needing nice, help. Nice, nice, nice. Go, go, go and then you're moving in because Freya got uh, just three on point. It's just three. dibs. We win this. We win this. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Then win. Now. We win this. So we win this. I'm charging Ryan. Ryan is one. Ryan is very low. He's getting healed. I should have held on to that. I'm so sorry. I should have held on to that. I'm so sorry. Oh, big, big, big. You got it, you got it. Diva half, Diva half. I'm going to use... Sorry, I'm behind low set. 
Yeah, yeah I'm tracking where uh, uh, in my own VOD real quick. I think I might have tried to barrage the rest of the Yeah, you're at 5% ult charge, so you did try and barrage. And it got punished I'm gonna go immediately. So do you remember that barrage at all for you? No? Okay. My ultimate ability nice. is charging. Did you have I say... Okay. You know what, guys? I say... Uh, I, I have the moment in my VOD if you want it. Hey, 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 they're coming out. They're coming out. Sure, can you send it to me? Yeah. Just in the group chat, sign. Twitch VODs. Scram uh, scrobbling is fun. Fun times. Here you go. So what's the timestamp? 2 hours 39.20? Okay. So this is Evie's perspective. Charging Ryan. Okay. So this is right where they got rushed. Oh. Well. Oh. That must get res. You get res. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Trying to heal. Trying to heal. Trying to heal. So, uh, Dibs try and kills Farah. Faria kits uh, him at one HP, and that allows the res to come up from Rami. And then Toaster somehow survived this entire time. Neat. I need some healing. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Let's go. Go hard. Go hard. Go hard. I have Valkyrie. Should I pop it? Just three on point. No. It's just three. We win this. We win this. Maybe. Then win. Now. We win this. I'm charging Ryan. Ryan is fun. Ryan is very low. He's getting good. We're 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 getting good. we Rami's right. on mercy here. You're the Zarya, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be brutally honest. I when Rami res color like a, like a moments before, mm -hmm. I was just blaming myself for the mistake because I thought it was the mercy. <laughs> 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 That's too good. But hey, this Zarya play is not that bad. I haven't ever watched that last like 45 seconds or something. Um, how do you think this fight went from your perspective? I guess. There was a lot of chaos. Um, you know, this is last fight. We're past 85%. It's last fight. So how do you think this... Uh, I'll play it again if you just want to just talk about how this last fight went from your perspective, playing Zarya, not Mercy. Yeah, it's... it's I This was very tough for me because this tournament I was also utilizing because this tournament tournament was practiced for my Zarya effectively. Oh, this is the first time I was like, I'm going to utilize Zarya at a higher tier level, and I believe I can make it work. And see, even right there, I, I knew that that Ryan was going to charge. I should have saved it for color based off of where he was going. Uh, right here, I'm just like trying to get charged before I die. Mm -hmm. um, my projected bubbles need a lot of practice. Sometimes I mistime my personals. Um, this was also like a day after I changed my sensitivity, by the way. So this was fresh after going from 6.8 to 3.04. Um, so a lot of changes really quickly. So that's why this gameplay is pretty, pretty rough. Um, I was looking for Reaper Flank right there. Um, I was hoping that we can make this work. And I took the personal bubble, but then bec I, because I personal bubbled that charge, I didn't have it for Diva Bomb. Um, I did get rezzed. Uh, personal bubble and toaster to see if I can get some charge to make sure that he can also take space without bubble uh, without shield but that was still a bad bubble I should uh, saved it for when he took more damage um, I'm pretty sure I'm calling for we win this fight because we just threw a healing orb and Valkyrie healing yep so I knew we would win that and with me being high charge and I'm about to have grab so the divas up in the air so I knew I could get grab off without it being defense matrix and I was able to get off a bubble to keep a uh, toaster up alive. And he was able to get off a really good shatter here. Um, I'm still looking around to see who needs potential bubbles. I don't even know who I bubbled there. But I, as once I realized I couldn't even really bubble, I went for the D.Va again, fo focusing on tank targets after my grav. Uh, now we're already at 40% charge again. Um, that is a strategy a lot of Zarya's use to focus down the squishies in gravs. 
to then kill the tanks afterwards to get mm -hmm. a lot of ult charge when they're high charge. Something I tried to go for. I believe in this fight we called that um, they were going white and then they were going high white. And so we backed up in preparation for that. I don't recall exactly what happened after this point. I believe they went uh, full in on this from above. Yeah, this is a very weird wrong. rotation for them coming in from dark. So you're actually defending. I, Go ahead, Toaster. I remember this play because it was actually like at really impressive to me at the time. Because uh, they started, we had color coming out on high ground originally. They wanted to push color out. So they had high ground control, and then they just made us stay in white because we were kind of, you know, expecting them to drop down. But then they pushed from like three different angles after pushing us out of high ground. How do you think you like, should have played it around it? Or could you have, like, what is the counterplay there? Have. So what would you have Basically, done kind of looking at this again? So I don't know, uh, like, which thing. I Do you want to see it from my perspective? <laughs> Well, let's let's watch. The you should, uh, this you from, should yeah. You watch it from mm -hmm. Toaster's perspective. Okay. I, no, I would say play out the fight. Yeah, from let's this play out this fight, yeah, and then we'll swap to there. Toaster's perspective. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna listen to this with comms too. I'm just gonna go back just a little bit. Let's go back to yeah. The comms give a lot of context. Yep. I sure assume they will. Okay. My ultimate ability nice. is charging. Did you have all I say, okay. You know what, guys? I say we we play we play near point. Hey, hey, hey! They're coming out! They're coming out! They're coming out! Yeah, they're coming right. Yeah, they're coming up! They're coming up! Upstairs! Oh, up high! Attic! Go! Yep, they are. Charge him when he drops. They're running away. Yeah, they can't actually drop. So we still projected their own. Yeah, minor, minor. But with Faria and you both spamming that high ground, you know, they they got scouted, color scouted it, and was like, nope, I'm out. And then they kind of go back down the stairs, so they are attacking from dark, even though their original plan was attic. From there. Light room? Or heaven, or window. I don't think there's so many different colors. I'm saving bubble for uh, for color, not you, Toaster. Yeah. That mine. Okay. Good decision, though. Die. I need. Nope. Paper one, paper one, paper one. Not ours. Where's our rocket going? Uh, I believe the correct term is rolled. <laughs> I'm going Lucio. That's an unfortunate one. I, that happened extremely fast. And this is kind of like we were talking about the benefits of having Lucio early. And if there are two ground-based compositions, the team with the Lucio gets to control engages and disengages, um, as well as just having much cleaner and quicker engages. You know, they're running a uh, close-range composition. They're running a, a Reaper wants to be close. They're running the, the Reinhardt wants to be close. Both D.Va and Zarya also want to be within 10 meters of things. Um you know, around that range. You can be a bit farther on both of them. But, uh, yeah, having Lucio, you can go from just not showing to closing distance on a Bastion before the Bastion gets much value at all. Let's watch this one more time. They're in server again? I'm saving bubble for, uh, for color, not you, Toaster. Is that mine? Okay. Die. I need... Paper one, paper one, paper one. Not ours. Where's our rockets going? I'm going Lucio. Just, okay. Yep. Toaster, go ahead. So here's the thing. This wasn't really about the Lucio. Like, what happened is that because Color wanted to take the high ground for, like, you know, just to have the high ground positioning, because then if they were to push main, it would be extremely difficult to deal with Bash. Yes. So they either already planned a call to push the black side of the map or to go the attic. Or they already saw color rotate. If they saw color rotate, then they just wanted to push him out. Or push her out. Either way. Black. So they all go black. They push upstairs. Color drops. And from there, all of us are either in white or on the point. Mm -hmm. So the entire black room in the attic is fog of war for us. So for them, well, they Faria have like... has eyes on it. Where? Faria was uh, spamming the rockets into that uh, window. She's in the air. But she can't see everyone in the attic. No. no. Yeah. So, like, we couldn't see, like, the Reaper. Or mm -hmm. anyone who was still, like, in the lower part of the Black Room. So what they do is that they send Reaper to go on a flank route. And they keep, like, the top part of the Black Room hidden. So we don't know if they're going to come from the top side or from the ground side. So what happens 
is that me and color stay under the platform expecting them to drop from the high ground because that's where they push from but they go back under and then they meet us at white which would kind of be okay if they did not send the reaper to flank so then we get sandwiched by a reaper ult so they actually baited us Do into you think staying the re- in the white room i'm gonna disagree like the reaper ult itself he could have you know the flank yes you have fog of war but the like faria has sight and is going to see the reaper uh before dropping down and you don't have anything to stop a reaper ultimate you have no the reaper CC. didn't drop down yeah but even if he had like you're saying that he flanked around yeah that's what <laughs> dibs told me that he flanked around all the way from our main Stairs. Get into like up high attic go yep i'll charge him when he drops they're running away. Know? Like, regardless of whether Reaper came from up top, got sped in with his team, or came from a flank, you have nothing to deal with Reaper Ultimate. I don't think it even remotely matters how he pulled it off. Um, yeah, but the reason why that we're so exposed to the Reaper ult is because we got corralled into the White Room because we were baited get, by the Fog of War from the attic. That seems like a bit of a stretch. So why did you actually set up? I mean, up that's in, what happened. <laughs> why did you actually set up in white here instead of something like farther back? I, I set up in white with color because I thought that they were all going to drop from the attic. And so if you they thought from that the attic if they were dropping the point, from the attic onto the point. They so, would sandwich themselves because I would be protecting color. Color would spray them all from Why would room, you not expect everyone... them to go onto the bastion right away? Because if they do that, then the rest of the team kills them. And they have to burn through my shield. Like if I'm in white with color. Like, you if they would... drop from the attic. Yeah, if they drop from attic, they would be sandwiching themselves between the team. Uh, exactly. far, yeah, assuming far they drop from, from attic, behind, they'd still they... be doing it to get onto the Bastion, though, because you're really not that far. You're basically directly beneath that window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, they don't know the exact positioning of Bastion as they're dropping out of white, <laughs> and we get the perfect angle. Because, like, li- listen... They're dropping to an angle from if they were to drop out from the attic. Yes. They are surrounded. Mm-hmm. And they have no cover. Yes. It's not a good thing for them to do. But I thought they were gonna do it because they all pushed color out of the attic. So you just assumed they were going to make a mistake. Well, yeah. Okay. So in the position But then they so, go white. So when your when your Farah them. scouted that they weren't going attic and they were going back through dark, why did you stay in a position that only had like you know, I seven was meters. not pulled. Like if if Faria was scouting that, I would, did not hear it. Like just because like it can be seen doesn't mean it's communicated. Okay, let's keep watching. Yeah, they can't Real actually quick, drop Jane. from there. Uh, freezing Titan chat was is apparently There's from there. Uh, we have, so. we've got enough people in here. <laughs> No, 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 no! I was saying that they they confirmed that uh, the Reaper didn't uh, like coordinate the flank. He just did it on his own. Okay, but regardless of the flank or you know <laughs> dropping from the high ground or speeding in with his team, I just don't think it matters. I think the position at which you guys were set up uh, was I rather weak, and you had no specific counter to a Reaper ultimate. Go ahead. Looking at it, look, sorry, looking at it from uh, Evie's perspective, yeah, we we were in a garbage position. Um, yeah. I didn't like. No matter, you're right. No matter if they would have dropped down, they just would have walked through our shield and like, didn't they have Diva? They just they would have taken me out in a second and like the Farah and Zarya just wouldn't have been able to do shit. Like I would have been gone. Um, yeah, there's no wouldn't have been, have been able to do enough either. quickly enough. You would have been able yeah, to you know it, provide that value. Was a, that was a, a bad lot. position for me to be in. Mm-hmm. I I don't know where I should have been, but. And I think I should have called it out when my rockets weren't getting anything at all on um, on the high ground, because um, I think if we had held closer to the mega outside uh, on the outside of the map well, that would have been way better because there would be more distance and more time for us to actually um you know get our impact in before they just ran over us mm-hmm. absolutely especially against the team that is so close range uh if you even if you like if you think they're going high ground or dark either one of those uh you know or coming up through the mini you're in a location where a close range composition uh they're going to be able to just appear from cover scouted or unscouted and get onto you extremely quickly uh, so I think taking longer sight lines and abusing that uh, would have been a much better choice here. You know, having them take a lot more damage with, with between the Bastion and the Farah, you have so much damage. Uh, you want to make sure that they use as many resources as possible or to, like burn eliminations uh, before they can even get on top of your Bastion. Because if they don't deal with the Bastion almost immediately, 
then just over time in the war of attrition, the Bastion's going to get so much value, it's going to be unwinnable past the first couple of seconds of the fight. Uh, for color, not you, Toaster. Don't mind. Okay. Die. I need. Get you. Reaper one, Reaper one, Reaper one. Yeah, not ours. Where are rockets going? I'm going, Lucio. And even if even if Eevee did land the projected bubble on the Bastion color instead of Toaster, I don't think it would have mattered, um, because they, you know, use speed and got on top of the Bastion right away. The bubble is only 200 HP, and they have defense matrix on the Bastion as well, so they'll just like burn through the bubble and still have all of Color's uh, damage being eaten. So even if the bubble did land on Color, I don't think it would have made much of a difference there. My will I'm gonna go over. like straight in. I charge right. That's about it. I can't touch. I can't. Yeah. Okay, so not ours. Okay. Next one. So one one. So going to the third map of Li Zhang and the one, fifth one. map of the finals tournament. Okay. One. Reaper's gonna be way less here. strong on this, uh, the following one, I think. What's the comp here, Toaster? Duh. We could still play the Fair Mercy. Yeah, I think we'll back to Diva. Go oh, where we played like first point. Alright. I'm the Mercy main now. <laughs> Is Brick okay on this map? Oh, I remember no. this. You want me to break? Wait, I thought, I thought uh, we were going back to D.Va. No. Are we going back to D.Va? Uh, oh, I think we should. Yeah. I think we should do it. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. I think we should. Yeah, we should, we should, we should. This worked last time. One. Okay. This, this amount of heals? Capture the uh, play close. Go left, go left. Go left, copy. We're gonna comp. So it doesn't seem like everyone was happy with the composition you rolled out with. Uh, who was the... That was your voice that said this amount of heals, right, Rami? Uh-huh. So... What are you playing here? Mercy Water Brigida, I think? Orb. They want there too. Yeah. Um, I wasn't happy with it. I could see it. I, I could see it having a 15% chance of working. Um, 15%. That's very precise. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't see this working out very well. I knew I knew that in previous rounds, Mediva was working well against them in, in previous games. Um, so I we decided that we were going to run D.Va. Um, however, I don't know if Brigitte Mercy was the answer at all. No. Is there, why do you think that? I don't think Brigitte paired with Mercy is enough healing output. I think, like, overall, like, damage is fine and, like, tankiness is fine. But I think her heals were just a little bit weak because... You know, even Brigitte is most effective, I suppose, when getting healing of her own, allowing her to you know, really beat the hell out of other frontline tanks and whatnot, like um, how the Dallas Fuel <clears throat> seems to do it with uh, uh, Mickey, is especially when they are doing, like, contesting or when they are doing something with kind of, like, the dual Brigida dives going after one another. It's uh, quite frequently that you'll see uh, both a Mercy Pocket and a Harmony Orb onto Mickey, which allows him to be so aggressive and get away with so much. And then his aggression leads to more rallies, which, again... You know, just snowballs into Mickey being allowed to be so aggressive. Uh, and that's really how you get so much value out of a Brigida. But if the Mercy has to pair with a Pharmacy, uh, pair with healing the tanks, and kind of trying to enable the aggression of the Brigida, there's just not enough heals to go around. Mm -hmm. Watch out for Lucio. Reaper one, Reaper one, Reaper oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Get in, you gotta go in now. Go We're gonna move. Let's get you back out there. Can't go in anymore. I'm a solo. I'm a solo. Go, go, go. I go, go, go. I'm in the little thing. Trade to Ryan. Trade to Ryan. No, you're fine. You're fine. Hey, Zarya, low. Some help. No ally bubble. Baby Diva. Baby Diva. We gotta kill this reef. Nice. This is the ball. This is it. Well, it worked out for you. It definitely worked out. Uh, playing a bit slower, you uh, the huge cancel from Rami onto uh, the coalescing Moira, which could have, that alone could have turned things around, especially if that Moira was said stayed up, could have helped cancel Colorblind's ultimate if it wasn't pocketed. So nice little frag there, Rami. That was pretty good. This is it, better. Yeah. Somehow. I think with their comp, I should just run break each time. Can we hold? Yep. They're okay. running a Brigida themselves. You're right, can't heal fall damage. Okay. 
They're running triple here. I have Shatter. I'm gonna look for Shatter like right now. So Toaster, you had a Brigitte here. Uh, why did you not go for the stun slam? Um, uh... Or the flash. Where? Where was it? What do you mean? It was there right at the choke. They're just coming through the main choke at uh, Night Market. I'm looking uh, in my VOD. Let's see. Oh, probably because I didn't think that he had Shatter. But I guess, he didn't he ring me out? He yeah. probably should have had it. I yeah. didn't think about that. But I just saw a bunch of people without a Rhine, so I just went for the Shatter. If I had blocked the Shatter, then it would have been fine. But I didn't need to, like, go for a Flash Shatter or a Stun Shatter because, like, they didn't have any protection for the Shatter. The mistake was just not blocking his Shatter, but I didn't think that he had it. So, but they did block your Shatter. Wait, what? No. Did they not? They're standing up here. Wait, wh what? No, I Shattered too, yeah, somehow. I think with their comp, I should just... I Shattered Diva and Mora. They're running a Brigitte themselves now. They're running triple heal. I have Shatter. I'm gonna look for Shatter like right now. Oh, so you shattered the two to the left over by the Mega that we can't see. Yeah. And then the Reinhardt came back in and shattered you. Yeah. So you saw the opportunity, you just got counter shattered because you weren't ult tracking. Right. Okay. We're all stunned, we're all stunned. Because uh, you're fine, you're fine, you're he you're fine, you're me fine. out and that like a billion ult charge, even though he also dies, and I didn't take that. Can you eat me? Can you eat me? This is not I can't get a point. People just point. Get a point. Get a point. It's okay. It's okay. We win the fight. It's okay. We win the fight. Yeah, win the fight. Just win the fight. Just win the fight. Just win the fight. Are you gonna win the fight? They're done. They're brigida. I can't. No, it's okay. That's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. Come back with color block. Ten seconds. Wait, wait. We're not. So let's go back. Where was this? Uh, where was this call? It was Freya who was calling to return to the point, right? Four twenty thirty. Let's go here. I have Shatter. I'm gonna look for Shatter like right now. Slam. Shatter slam. Oh, we're all stunned. We're all stunned. We're all stunned. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Do you remember why that uh, barrage didn't get any value past the Moira, Faria? I I saw the Diva got shattered, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would have the time and space to get both the Moira and um, DMAC Diva. So my thought was, uh, kill the Moira so she can't get up and fade, and then kill the Diva before she remex at least, so we have a bigger chance of winning that fight. Because did, did she wake up shattered. early and just start defense matrix you? Yep. Okay, that sucks. <laughs> and then here, who, yeah. is, who is it that's forcing the point? It's. Basically, I was just trying to play point. that we need to to focus on winning this fight regardless if it's the cap, because mm -hmm. if they have one on the point, that's one down, and we could have net won that fight if we were intentionally going to win the fight the entire time. And you were also in, in front of control percentage, right? It's not like this is 99%, and if they cap, you have to immediately mm -hmm. transfer back if you even if they get 10 percent and you in the fight you'll overall get like 15 or 20 percent before they even get the next fight so that is the right call um if you can't easily disengage and move back to the point or you're scared of doing it in, a, in an um unorganized fashion for example if you send two back to the point but it's somebody like a tracer and the tracer then runs away instead of taking the 6v5 in the courtyard the tracer made the fight in the courtyard 5v4, they win that one, and then they clean up the remaining two. Get a point, get a point! It's okay, it's okay, we win the fight, it's okay, we win the fight. Win the fight. Yeah, just win the fight, just win the fight. Yeah, if stayed all courtyard, just swing. Valk would have been more useful. Mm -hmm. but and more grouped in the courtyard, way. people were also pretty far back from the uh, tanks who were fighting forward. Just a swing. Yeah. But as soon as I, re I like, basically as soon as That's what we want. Rhea made that call, mm -hmm. me popping Valk was a bad call. We would have had it for the next engagement. By the way, this this round is super embarrassing for me. It, it happens. In many regards. Is there, uh, so what, in, I'm ready. if you had been looking at a VOD review or something of this, um, you know, like right now, I suppose, what could you have done in the future to kind of like recognize that that was a poor Valkyrie? Or what could you do to recognize not that same situation and not Valk like that in the future? Well, I was hoping that if we stayed, like, Basically speaking, determining that the team, uh, like, even if I did get the res, the res off, which I did, but as well as that everybody was courtyard, mm -hmm. teammates were still split between the two sides of the courtyard, effectively speaking. And so that Valkyrie didn't have as much value. I should have, at the very least, called, like, get together, and then we would Valk. 
and realizing that we weren't able to get together would have given me the the couple seconds to realize to not Valk. Okay. So it like basically speaking, a lot of issues come down to hey, more communication, less mistakes, better decision making. We would have had better time, um, but unfortunately, the mistakes do not end there. I'm looking forward to seeing the other mistakes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I hopped over that wall to get a line side on Toaster a bit more to heal him. But it didn't end up working out at all. Go to jump off, go to jump off. They're not going to kill you. So you were at the vantage, now you're probably going to be 15, 20% back. Oh, tried to give it into back. That's unfortunate. Uh, here's going to be the plan. Gonna, like, Here it comes. Oh, no. What is this? I'm so. Oh, oh yes. no! Oh, the big. It gets even worse. It gets even worse? I wasn't even remotely prepared for that. I love that call. I, w I wasn't even remotely prepared. I gotta, I gotta listen to this again. Like, go to go for a res? They're not watching. I really wish I hadn't used Diva Bomb. I wish I had just killed myself. Oh my god, dude, dude, dude. Yes! I wish I had just done that. I think if we, if this hadn't happened, I think we had a, a good chance of winning. Because this fight just never happened. Oh man, too funny. There's just, there's a sometimes you just take a mulligan. Oh no! Oh, I thought you were gonna die! <laughs> Bicolor. See, but here's the thing that that extends this mistake to the entire round. That's the thing. Yep. Because is this gonna be last fight? I think if yeah, you're if you're brave, is your brave gonna reset? Okay, you guys do reset in time. You'll get one last fight. This is this map was a disaster. I thought you guys were. Uh, Spoiler, we don't. I, uh, I I thought you guys were kidding about this map being an utter disaster, but uh, no, it was bad. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. Oh, that's too bad. They had both their tank ultimates going into final fight. G G. This is reminding me of my uh, my weekly days. It was good. Oh no. Yeah, but basically there was a lot of different small things that I was like, if literally everything lines up, this is a good res. Yeah. If not, it's bad. And and, it, and it'll extend the, and the losing because, fight. Because like if you think about it, if like they go off to the side to go and kill. Rami as she gets back in Mecca, that would have been a sick boop from Furia. But I, in my opinion, she did boop also a little bit early, got the Lucio, but Lucio was able to wall back and still stay in the engagement. And Diva Bomb didn't get any value. Um, I, I literally booped him 90 degrees off the edge, and he somehow still strafed over to the other wall. I the air had, strafe. He, <laughs> air he had, strafe. He had, <laughs> he had speed amp in air, which gave him the opportunity oh, to get man. back. So when is the up. next tournament that we are going to see? Are we going to see the return of LGBT, LGB Toaster? <laughs> hmm. Maybe in a month and a half, two months, if Ooh. they do it again. Ooh. But, I'm excited for that. But all things, like, genuinely speaking, all things considered, that this had zero preparation. And... Yeah, well, tournaments are meant to be fun. Like, Overwatch is meant to be fun as a whole, too. So it's fun mm -hmm. to see, you know, a group of streamers go into a tournament, do well, have some fun, you know, see how they play together. Winning isn't everything. It's my, it's my motivational pep talk. You guys did good. I appreciate you coming on and talking about it as well. Any kind of closing thoughts from anybody about the tournament? Or <laughs> make excuses? <laughs> Evie, this is not oh. representative of my normal Mercy play. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, objectively speaking, it is, though, in a way. It is, though. My entire... It, 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 it's kind of it's kind of a weird two-sided thing of... Uh, I made more mistakes than normal that day that were objectively mistakes, but my playstyle entirely is about risks. And in the moment, like, this has a chance of getting us an advantage, and I'm going for it. And so, like, that's that's kind of my entire play style. Me positioning more aggressively to have better options for who to fly to and who to beam, that's more aggressive. That's more questionable in positioning. And so that's kind of my entire play style of risky plays. And while I made more mistakes here, those risky plays just didn't pan out either. Fair enough. And, and that's, so that kind of comes down to... 
you know, better decision making, communicating and trusting teammates. Well, I'm going to thank you all for coming on. We did our we did long intros, so I won't uh, won't make you go through it again with the sign offs. But Evie, Toaster, Faria, Colorblind, Rami, thank you for joining me. Thank you for the VOD submission color. I appreciate it. And uh, no problem. good luck. And I hope to see you guys again. Uh, so next, it's another UGC tournament in a month, you said? Uh, they they said maybe, but they said we'll maybe. see. Well, I look forward to it. Thanks for coming on, guys. And That's girls. Nice. Thanks for having Thank me. You. And good luck with the rest of your uh, streams and whatnot. Hey. Anyway, have, have a good afternoon now. <laughs> Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Well, that was a that was a bit chaotic. That is the the most people I've ever had on to do a VOD review at the same time. I'm not sure if I I'd probably stick it to two or th I'm not. I think three could be okay. Five was a bit much for me to handle without practice. But uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? That was fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it.